Great oaks from little acorns grow, Mr. Obama. You know that as a great healer and a great doctor. It's not the tiny fraction that we're worried about. It's how the tiny fraction has metastasized under your lack of watching, Mr. Obama, that has the whole world asking questions, Mr. Obama. Petri, does that answer your question? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, I mean, obviously, listening to you, uh, my, uh, I, I slip into my normal ways of being objective and cynicism. Well, no, no, I would rather you walk around with uh, a feeling that everything is good now that Obama gave through through some uh, some words down down the, down the pipe. Through some words at everyone, and then suddenly, what, the war on terror is won? Because he said a few words that weren't quite as stupid as they were a week before? Well, now you got a point, because he forgot to slip in the climate change as the reason for all of the hate. <laughs> oh, so that's what encouraged you, is that he didn't use climate change as that what was motivating them. I see. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't see it that way. You mean he's actually moved slightly off that uh, that subject for a while? how we actually as humans can be fooled sometimes so easily you sound like a very nice guy who borders on the naive guy well yeah well come on i'm admitting that i'm human too don't get me wrong i'm a hundred percent donald trump all the way in fact yeah but you want but don't you want to believe in people you're the type who actually likes people and has faith in them right yeah but i got enough fury and hatred when i get angry going too so i mean uh I'm I'm not going to be a hypocrite. No, or actually, I am a hypocrite. We're all. Well, Pe Petri, do we know each other? Have we ever met in in the city at any time? I think we did, didn't we? No, no, no. I'm just a, an old, long time caller. Remember, I, I wrote you a tribute song about the Savage Nation. And, and I know your name. I I mean, when you say Petri, I thought I immediately recognized it. Well, I'm sending you a a, a Christmas gift. Kwanzaa, Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever you'd like to call it. Government Zero goes out to you back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. All right, welcome back to the Savage Nation. We're coming to the halfway point of this three-hour program. Here's an email to me on Facebook from Kimberly M., what a joke. Attorney General Lynch wants to prosecute people who lift the mantle of rhetoric towards violence regarding Islam, but not mosques where they preach hatred of the West or Black Lives Matter who want dead cops. Yeah, you got it right. When you understand who Lynch is and you understand that Al Sharpton handpicked her, <clears throat> then you'll understand what you have in the Attorney General's office. Black Lives Matter. Didn't they say pigs in a blanket? That means killing cops, didn't they? How many imams are preaching death to the West on a daily basis in America? You have to figure at least one. Did he go there yet? Did uh, he go to the mosque yet today? I'm still waiting to hear about that. Our Department of Homeland Security is supposedly going there to give a speech. Did he get there yet? We don't know. I'm talking to myself. Oh, no, he hasn't arrived yet? He's going to be speaking at a mosque that's been tied up with terrorism today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gets even better. This is not a black thing. This is not a white thing. This is really a survival thing. So all weekend, you know what I did? I tried to get my mind off this hatred that's coming at all of us, freedom-loving Americans. This hatred coming from this this regime of ours, this, this junta. It's like a junta. I called it a junta, not a regime. It's more like a South American junta. Than, than even a regime. Some named it a regime, I call it a junta. So, I haven't told you this, and I don't want to dwell on it, but, you know, the same publisher who published Stop the Coming Civil War and Government Zero, which many of you love, sent the street books, a division of Hachette, has contracted a book from me months and months ago on Teddy, Teddy and me. A very special book, largely pictures with some commentary. Now, I've been talking about dogs since 1994, on my radio show, I used to have a dog, Snowy, my Sheltie. She was a big part of my show. Uh, and, and I did that for years. So now, this book is astounding. So they came out to take pictures. You won't believe these pictures. The book's not for sale. I'm not selling a book. i got to tell you my weekend. They flew out from New York to be with me. Friday night, we went to a restaurant in a town near me. And we sat in a booth. And it took, he took, Vince, is, Vince Romini is, one, is probably the best dog photographer in the world. Wait until you see these pictures of Teddy and I. 
You're going to love this book to death when it's available, but it isn't. And, I, and it was a way of me getting away from the nightmare. And the pictures of the dog and the pictures of him, there he is, we're at the wine rack in the restaurant. I'm picking wine. I make believe I'm picking a bottle of wine. He's all used bottles. And I'm holding Teddy in my arms and looking at the pictures right now. And he's looking at the bottle like I'm looking at like he understands it, like he's studying the, the label. You see his face? Like, there he is. How do they mimic us so well? I'm holding a bottle, looking at the label. He's looking at the label like he understands it. And he's almost talking to me. Well, I don't know. That cab is a little fruity. You may not like it. It's not as tannicky as you like. It's amazing. The mimics these guys are. I don't know. I'm mimicking him or he's mimicking us. It's hard to say. But dogs, as you well know, if you're a dog lover, are something very, very amazing. And they're a big part of my life. They have been since I'm a little boy. It's not like I suddenly got a dog and a mascot just for effect. But I'm looking at the pictures we took, me bicycling and him running past the bicycle. There I am in the Hellcat in a flowery shirt taken last summer. We did the first round of pictures. So Friday night we went to a restaurant and took pictures there. He mainly slept on the floor. He's such a noble little guy. No one could believe the eyes in the sun. Everyone's dog is their special dog. And then there's all sorts of, then let's see, what we did Saturday. I went to the Basque restaurant, which I love. And we got pictures in the bar of Teddy and I in that restaurant. Oh, and there's some um, watercolors that I painted of him that are going to be in this book. Here's the, here's the paradox. This book will outsell all my other books. I just know what's going to happen. The book that's going to be the most fun that didn't eat my heart out, I know what's going to happen. It'll be like a Jonathan Livingston seagull. It's so lyrical and beautiful. The fun, most fun pictures are of me wearing a shearling jacket and him wearing a Victorian-era coat of the same material. We look like, well, it, we're wearing the same outfits <laughs> when it comes down to and I have a martini glass in my hand and the dog in the other, and he's looking at the glass. Okay, you get the picture. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-728. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Um, nice, I talked about my dog. Uh, you know, I look at movies, uh, documentaries from World War II, and I see the troop ships going over to battle zones. They even let them have dogs on those ships in those days. The guys could drink, they could smoke. They could have a dog. What kind of animals are running the military now? No dogs, no cigarettes, no alcohol. Just Prozac and Adderall. Just drug them so the greedy bums in the drug business can make a fortune. Anyway, look. I'm trying to tell you something about life itself. You know, how do I cope with it? I'm on the front lines of this intellectually. I'm not taking bullets like the soldiers in Afghanistan. Don't get me wrong. But when you're doing this on a daily basis, whether it's me or the others in the talk business who've been carrying the mantle and the flags for all these years, especially me with my mantra of borders, language, and culture, I own this subject. It's a tough row to hoe, as they say. But no one's forcing me to do it. No one's saying you have to do it. No one's making me do this. So I have my own m means of coping with it is what I'm saying to you. And one of them, as I've told you, was the dog. He's a big source of comfort for me, which is why the publisher is doing the book. It's about man and dog. It's not just about the dog or about the man. It's about the man and the dog interaction. You'll see when it comes out in May. I don't even want to talk more about it. What I'm getting at is, so Friday night, one restaurant, then Saturday pictures. Saturday night, the Basque restaurant, which was the most fun. Again, the food and the drinking and the dog, blah, blah, blah. Sunday was more pictures, different locations. Sunday night, Chinese restaurant. So it's been a 48-hour uh, dog thing. And I, I didn't think I'd be able to do the show because it's very tense having your picture taken. By the way, if you think it's easy, it's not easy. I didn't even want it. I said to her, don't come out. I'm not in the mood. I don't feel good. I've been sick. I don't want any pictures taken of me. I don't like it. I actually don't like pictures taken of me. So she said, no, we'll only take pictures of the dog. But all right, so I took pictures they took of me. She said, you look great. I don't, I don't look great. I don't feel that I look good, okay? You know what I'm saying? But that went on for 48 hours. Now, here's the funny part about pictures. They exhausted the dog. He was worried, knocked out from being. I kept calling him movie star. He's looking at me right now. I would say, movie star. I said, Kate and Vince are here. They're going to take your picture. Don't think they don't know it. He was showing off. He knew he was the movie star. And they start to preen and they show off. Well, this one's much smarter than my other dogs. Some of them have much higher intelligence levels, just like people. They vary according to the uh, 
breed number one and number two specific individuals within the breed. I mean, don't tell me they're all the same. Say like all dogs are the same. Yeah, the Rottweiler is the same as the Chihuahua. Sure, everyone could be a lawyer at Harvard. Take a look at what Harvard looks like now. Look at the lawyers they're pumping out. Oh, everyone's the same. They all go to medical school. They're all neurosurgeons. Take a look at the doctors which are churning out now. All the same because of liberalism. You know, outcome-based education. Everyone's the same in Mao Zedong's China and Obama's America. All the same. Everyone's a genius. Everyone should go to Harvard. Take a look at the cesspools the universities have become now because they can't keep up with everyone else. They start telling they're going to burn the university down. That's all. Okay, look, don't get me started. Dogs teach us an awful lot. So I did do the show, and I'm here. So let me read you an email that I got that's very important, apropos not of dogs. Don't call about dogs, by the way. Not interested. Uh, 7.41 p.m., Facebook to Savage. How can so many Americans be ready to put more troops into Iraq and Syria? We spent 10 years there, trained a 200,000-man army, lost the lives of 4,000 American soldiers, had several thousand more come home with legs, arms, and faces blown off, Spent two trillion dollars, and what did we accomplish? Created ISIS. Our two hundred thousand man army disintegrated before the first shot was fired, and now Iran controls the Iraqi government. And now fifty percent of Americans think we can fix that mess by sending in more troops. You people who claim to have such great respect and love for our fighting forces should show some conscience about sending them back to be killed or maimed in another impossible mission of nation building. An infinite occupation, writes Gen Xer. It's very interesting, by the way. It's almost irrefutably uh, correct. The only way that I think we should have ground troops sent back in there is if there's a draft where all men and women of draft age are drafted into a new military and all of the barracks that were stolen by greedy people who were friends of Barbara Boxer and Diane Feinstein and Nancy Pelosi in the San Francisco area, all the greedy developers who stole the Presidio and turned it into a liberal uh, playground, should be forced to give the barracks back when we do have the next draft. Where are they going to put them? Oh, I see. I'm sorry. So all of the military bases that were given away to the friends of senators and congressmen to be turned into liberal playgrounds and hotels, we don't have them anymore. So if we have a draft for a war, guess what? You have to build new barracks. And guess who'll build them? Why, the friends of Boxer, the friends of Feinstein, and the friends of Pelosi. They'll build, build brand new barracks on land owned by friends of Boxer, friends of Feinstein, and friends of Pelosi. It's a seamless game. It works well. This is how a, a country collapses from corruption, in my opinion. Now someone writes this on my Facebook, and some of these are really good comments. That's why I love Facebook now, because I don't get emails and I don't get faxes, but I do get them on my Facebook page. <coughs> 6.54 p.m. The problem is that America now is dealing with a group of people that believe in Syria's global ethnic cleansing. And Obama is trying to deal with this in rational terms. He tried to enforce his rational ideas on Israel, where the Muslim extremists there are serious in, seriously into ethnic cleansing. Notice there are no Jews in Gaza, and never will be, as long as Hamas is there. There are Muslims who are your everyday people just like everyone else, so I wouldn't think that the entire Muslim thing believes in global ethnic cleansing. But many Muslim groups are obsessed with power and have gotten the ability to do some heavy damage on the entire world stage. Definitely a global ethnic cleansing issue. Everyone who does not fit their model of the perfect Muslim has to go. Entire religions such as Judaism and Christianity, as well as unrecognized Muslim groups, are toast in their eyes. They are willing to take on everyone. Either Obama is naive or he agrees with them, which is hard to believe because I don't think he believes in ethnic cleansing as unpopular as he is. That's another writer. So th these are the thoughts that people are actually expressing, incidentally. So every day we wake up and we hear another speech about you can't blame all Muslims, don't, uh, don't do this. They're so worried about offending Muslims in America, and yet they have such disregard for Christians and everyone else. Why is it that every department that Obama has control over is only worried about offending Muslims and not about protecting us? They're spending more of their intellectual energy on defending Muslims than they are on protecting us from the crazy ones, aren't they? It's, it's a world that's upside down. And so we cope. We go on with our days. We run. We take vitamins. We eat well. 
We try to get eight hours sleep. We play with our dogs. 